All right, if everyone is ready, I will call to order the Fraser Board of Zoning Appeals meeting of October 7th, 2021 um, to order. Uh, first item on the agenda, uh, if you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance as soon as we have our flag up. Thank you very much, Paul. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, which begins, I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, America and, and to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands. It stands. One nation, nation under God, under God. Yeah. Indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, roll call. Uh, and if you would please, for the members, when your name is called, if you would please remember to identify your location uh, with city, uh, county, and state. Go ahead, Mr. Burley. Member Burley. Member Burley, your microphone is muted at the moment. Sorry about that. Um, it would be Macomb, Frazier, and Michigan. Member Chimenti. Macomb, Tom's Macomb, Michigan, Macomb County, Frazier, and that's it. Thank you, Member Farina. Uh, Fraser, Frank Farina, Fraser, Macomb County, Michigan. Uh, Member Logan. Logan, uh, Macomb County, uh, Fraser, Michigan. Member Menendez. Macomb County, Fraser, Michigan. And Chair Stymack. I am in attendance uh, from uh, City of Fraser, Macomb County, Michigan. Um, there is a quorum to conduct business. Um, <clears throat> this meeting is being held via Zoom. Um, to ensure that those wishing to observe and or participate in the meeting have the opportunity to do so. The public can participate via the Zoom application, internet access via the Zoom website, and or via telephone using the Zoom telephone numbers and the meeting ID. The public will be able to hear the Zoning Board of Appeals member, members and will be permitted to speak for up to five minutes during the public participation portions of the meeting. Please note that the callers viewers will automatically be muted and must remain muted until called upon to speak by the chair. Uh, we thank you for your attendance this evening and uh, hope that you find this platform uh, a safe and uh, amicable uh, way to conduct the meetings. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? I move to approve it. Okay. Yeah, motion by Farina, supported by Menendez, uh, to approve the minutes of the September 2nd meeting. Uh, that was the agenda. Or approve the agenda, I am sorry. I am sorry. To approve the agenda of the October 7th meeting. Thank you for the correction. Sorry for that. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Recognizing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. Hi. Oh, I'm Hi. sorry, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Urbeel, uh, if you would like to take roll, uh, roll call vote on that motion. Sir, uh, Member Burley. Yes. Member Cimenti. Yes. Member Farina. Yes. Member Logan. Yes. Member Menendez. Yes. Chair Stymack. Yes. That motion passes. The agenda is uh, approved as presented. Um, petitioners and members of the audience, the Zoning Board of Appeals as herein created is a body of limited powers where there are practical difficulties or unnecessary hardships in the way of carrying out the strict letter of the Fraser Code, the board shall have the powers in passing upon appeals to vary or modify any of the provisions of the code relating to the construction, 
structural changes in equipment or alteration of buildings or structures so that the spirit of the code shall be observed, public safety secured and substantial justice done. No variance in the provisions or requirements of the code shall be authorized by the board unless the board finds evidence that all the following facts and conditions exist. First, that there are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances and or conditions applying to the property in question or to the intended use of the property that do not apply generally to other properties in the same zoning district. Second, that such a variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right, similar to that, similar to, similar to that possessed by other properties in the same district and in the same vicinity. The possibility of increased financial return shall not of itself be sufficient to warrant a variance. Third, that the authorizing of such a variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent properties and will not materially impair the intent and purpose of the Fraser Code or the public interest. And finally, that the condition or situation of the specific piece of property or the intended use of the property for which the variance is sought is not of so general or reoccurrent a nature as to make reasonably practicable the formulation of general regulation for such condition or situation. Um, the item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing item. Um, and I should also note for the benefit of the petitioners, um, since our last meeting, uh, we have uh, received a resignation from one of the members of the board uh, due to the fact that they moved out of the city, uh, which disqualified them uh, to serve on the board. Uh, so right now, out of the uh, normally seven members that are seated at the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have six with one vacancy. In order to be successful on a variance request, you need to have a majority of the board, uh, so four out of seven members. Um, so your odds are uh, slightly down this evening due to um, the fact that there is a vacancy on the board. Um, I will uh, give the petitioner the opportunity to request postponement of their item in order to have the benefit of a full board. Uh, however, I can uh, probably say with some degree of certainty uh, that there will not be an appointment made to the vacant position um, by the next meeting. So it may be some time before we get that uh, position filled. Um, with all of that said and done, the next item on the agenda is postponed cases, appeal number 21-03, Variance request regarding the property at 17157 Anita uh, for uh, an appeal on an accessory structure. Um, is the petitioner uh, in the room? I am. Thank you very much. Mr. Reveal, if you would please uh, give us the background information regarding this request. Yes. Um, so, as you may recall, um, Last month, the board postponed this case to give the applicant uh, time to provide some more information um, about the property uh, and, and to provide a plot plan of the property so that the specifics of the request could be um, determined. Um, the applicant did submit additional information, including that plot plan, um, which you, you had in your packets, um, to, to refresh the this application was to build a two-story accessory structure in the rear yard using approximately the footprint of the existing garage. The proposal is to demolish that existing garage and uh, put in that general location a, uh, a garage structure that has a second story and a um, in the in its original uh, configuration this request included a full apartment and second story. So it met the ordinance definition of a dwelling unit. Um, and the applicant was, was asking the board for variances from the ordinance uh, stipulations that only one dwelling unit per parcel 
is allowed and that an accessory building may not be more than one story and 15 feet in height. Uh, the, the revised, the revised um, proposal, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. The plot plan is, um, is here the applicant that the applicant provided showing the location of the Sweeney drain with relation to their house. Um, and uh, the image on the left is just a, uh, a drawing of the drain itself, um, highlighting the, the distance there. That's, that information is also on the plot plan. Um, I believe that plot plan is what the board was asking for. Um, and it seems complete and accurate from the information that the city has. Um, the, the proposal, the proposed plans of the structure are on the screen now. Um, since the last meeting, the applicant has omitted the, the kitchen appliances in the plan. I think without a kitchen that the, this proposal is um, just underneath the ordinance definition of a dwelling unit. Um, but to build this structure as presented, it would not require that variance. Um, it would, it would, but it would still require a variance for the height and um, and just for the height. Um, the applicant also provided uh, elevations of their house, um, and I think they they, they can uh, fill in this narrative. But I think the assertion here is that the um, configuration of the back elevation of the house complicates their ability to. Um, to put an addition in the backyard, which was, I think, one possibility that was talked about last time. And with that, I will answer any questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Rabeel. Are there any questions for the administration? Mr. Rabeel? Yes. Uh, that the aerial view you have the from satellite, I mm -hmm. guess it's the satellite view. I can't see what's under that red line. How many cars are parked in that driveway? Oops, excuse me. Um, I could move the red line in just one second. Question for you now. Looks like three. Yeah, there's three. I agree. There's there's three car there cars under the center red line now. And the the one in the lower left corner of that property is that to the another property or is that signed to that same property? I guess that is in front of the property that we are talking about. It's sort of parked over the sidewalk, but that, that the the applicant's property is is this lot. Um, if you can see my cursor all the way yeah. to the to the red line. Yep. Okay. Are there other questions for the administration? Recognizing no questions for the administration at this time, uh, does the petitioner have anything they wish to add to their application or to the administration's uh, presentation? I don't believe we do. I believe everything was um, everything was pretty much, I, I hope to be clarified in the letter that we wrote to the, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals members back on September 14th, explaining why we can't add onto the back of the house and how the easement of the Sweeney drain restricts of from adding on to the west side of the house. Um, like I said, this is not to be used as an apartment. It's just to be used. I, I have a mobility issue. I have a condition. I've been for almost 20 years. Things are getting worse. And I have to ambulate with either crutches or a transport chair. And because our house has six levels on it, it's just getting almost impossible to do. And we thought it would be easier to have one area to go to during the day. That would be easier for me to, to navigate around. That was the reason you're we hoping to do this.
Okay, are there questions for the petitioner? I have yeah. one. Go ahead, Ms. Menendez. With ambulating, how, how is that going to work in inclement weather? When it's snow, heavy, heavy snowfall, rain to, to move from the garage into the house. It looks like a somebody somebody has, to, somebody has to help me on a 24 hour basis. Um, my husband, um, my daughter's here a lot of times and somebody will be able to get me from the house to the garage, um, either by the transport chair for helping me navigate with the crutches, whatever, whatever is easiest to do at that time. I the doctor, I have I have medical documentation if if you needed to see it from my doctor saying I need attendant care 24-7. Okay, and as far as the kitchen removal, that has been removed from the plans, correct? Yes, it has. Thank you. I, I then have a question. What is that area with the double sink in it? It was just a, it was just a sink, basically. We can take that out if, if that's what, what we need to do. It's just basically a, a sink to wash hands or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't you just throw it? If you need, if you want to make it into a kitchen, you throw a a stove and a refrigerator on the, onto a wall. We don't need to do that. My husband, like I said, he can ambulate back and forth and bring, you know, prepare the food in our house now if he has to and bring it to where I'm at. Have you looked at a, a lift for your current house? They have these lifts that uh, attach to the yes. wall. Yes. We can't, we can't do that because part of my condition is. Um, not only do I have a condition with my leg, um, a nerve condition, but I also have a shattered kneecap, which my leg sticks out completely straight. I cannot bend my leg. So there's no way I could get a left lift to go up and down the stairs with the way my leg is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question. Uh, Mr. Logan, is that you? Go ahead. No, you just, ma'am, you just said you, you can't use a lift, a lift to get up and down the stairs. I can't, no, not because my leg sticks out straight. I cannot bend my leg oh. at all. How are you going to get upstairs if, if this is approved then? Because my husband, right now, I have to emulate the stairs by going up my back end. I have to go up and down the steps that way. It's very difficult for me to get up and down the steps. And the reason we wanted to do this is because we thought if I could just traverse the steps one time a day to get up there and one time at night, it would prevent from having to emulate or try to get up and down the steps several times a day, which is just too hard to do. The way our house is set up, there's not one level that has everything on it that I need for the activities of daily living. That's the only reason we wanted to try to do this. I mean, we're just trying to make my life simpler. I've been dealing with this condition for almost 20 years and things are getting worse and there's nothing they can do. I mean, I've tried all kinds of procedures and there's nothing they can do to help me. I was just how, trying to make- how many, how many steps are in one of your floors right now from your lower to the upper? I, to be honest with you, I, I tried to come there twice, yesterday and today, and nobody answered the door. I had no idea. I've had a couple of doctor's appointments this week. I don't had no idea anybody was coming over. I had no idea. I never heard anybody knocking on the doors. So I don't know what happened. I know Tuesday I had several doctor's appointments, and I had a couple yesterday. So yeah, I'm there's not three cars in the driveway. But anyhow, how many steps are in the from your from your lower to the upper? There's Five, probably six. six five or six from the family room up to the, the kitchen level. And then there's probably eight from the kitchen up to where the bedrooms are. And then there's another eight to go up to the next level. I mean, there's like six levels on our house and it's almost impossible to, to, to navigate anymore. So you, you'd be going up the, these steps in the, in the apartment once in the morning and once at night. Right, just have somewhere to somewhere to go where it's just easier for me to get around. That's all, that's the only intent. I mean, I'm not using it as an apartment as, as I'm not sure that, I mean, I know it's classified as that, but I wasn't using it as an apartment. I just wanted to have a place to go during the day. That's all to make my life easier. Things are getting more difficult. And like I said, I've got medical documentation. If, if you need to see it, I'm happy to provide it with the condition that I have and you know why it's so hard for me to get around. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What if you converted the first floor of the garage to living area? Pardon me? What if you converted the first floor of the garage to living area? I don't really want to give up my garage either. I mean, I would like to keep a garage. And I, if you 
if you separate off separate the garage, there's really not going to be any room to to move or do anything really. Mm -hmm. Because I note I note in the picture that there are three three maybe four cars on your property that are not in the garage. Right, I understand that, but I'd like to keep part of the garage just for storage, or if I if we need to put a car in there, I mean. That's the reason that I'd like not to give up the garage. And if you if you separate the portion for the garage, there's really not going to be any room left. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, um, sir. Mr. Chimetti? I'm trying to read through this. What about a bathroom? Did you eliminate the bathroom? No, we were going to keep the bathroom. And I believe that was still on the plans. I believe it was. Believe it was yep. still there. It's on the left side, Joe. Okay, okay. Oh, actually, I was looking for it in script. I mean, in, in print. Okay, all right. On the plans you sent us, what does the designation L mean and the designation F? Let me take a look. I think F is for furnace, I believe. L would be linen closet, F would be furnace. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I have a couple of questions uh, for the petitioner. Um, so on the plot plan that was provided, um, the easement, overall easement width is indicated as being 40 feet. Do you know how much of that is on your property? Hold on, let me, daughter, my daughter can answer. It's 40 feet from the center on each side of the drain. So it's technically an 80 foot easement. And as far as how much of it is on our property, Julie, can you tell? Well, I know we had to get a, we had to get a permission from the county just to put a fence up, but because that was a non-permanent structure, they, it, the fence is actually in the easement. Um, so that's a big portion of our, our second lot that we have. Well, it's 10 foot from the house and it's the lot is 80 feet and it looks to be like 20 feet. All right, let me let me do it a different way. So so adding up the dimensions on the plan, it appears that the easement is um, 20 feet onto your property. Is, would you agree with that if the dimensions are correct? Hold on just a second, let me verify. All right. I verified the distance from the house to the easement. My daughter verified the distance from the house to the easement, which is how much, John? On the plot plan. Sure. Hold on. So it's 10 foot on, 10 foot on the plan you gave us. Okay. okay. From, our, from the side of our house, there's 10 feet from our house to where the easement starts from the drain. So there's 10 feet on the west side of the house from the from where our, the end of our house is to the drain easement. Like I said, there's an 80 foot total easement on the drain and there's 40 feet from the center on each side. So my daughter mapped that out in the plot plan. <clears throat> All right, so let's see if you agree with me. So the plan shows a nine foot driveway. It shows five feet from the driveway to the east side of the house. It shows the house as being 36.5 feet wide and it shows the easement 10 feet away from the west side of the house. That's a total of uh, 40.5 feet, or excuse me, 60.5 feet. Um, if those dimensions are correct, that means that the easement is 19.5 or 20 feet uh, of the east excuse me, west uh, of the property. Those numbers seem to be correct. Just one second, please. Does that sound about right, Julie? I will have to trust your addition on that, but all dimensions listed on this plot plan are accurate. All right. The garage shown on this plan, is that the new garage or the existing garage? That would be the new garage. Okay. So if that new garage is three feet from the east property line and is 28 feet wide, uh, that means it's 31 feet, 31 foot from the east property line. Okay. And if the easement 
is 60 feet away from the east property line, that means that you have basically another 29 feet from the proposed garage footprint to the edge of the easement. Okay, I'll trust you on that, okay. So the question is why based on your stated hardship, would you build a second floor on the garage when you have just as much space on the ground west of the garage? Okay, as we explained um, on some of the pictures that we submitted, the way the, the, way the house is built, if you were to add a, an addition onto the back of the house, the two lower windows, the family room is partly underground and the windows on the upper level, because, because of that level is partly underground, they're not the same level as like a two-story addition would be. And you would not have any egress windows. You'd be blocking any way of getting out from those bedrooms or the family room. You'd have, and there's a cantilever also that extends from the back of the house. And I'm not sure how they would address that a builder, but you can't, you would have no way of getting out of the family. There would be, there are no other family room windows except the two on the bottom. And then the two on the top, like I said, you'd be blocking off any kind of egress um, escape have, from the top level as well. I didn't want to cut you off, but I believe you misunderstood my question. The question was to build a wider garage and just have a one story building so that you didn't have stairways to get up to that space that you want to have. Well, I would still like to enjoy part of um, having a backyard. And from what I understand, there's some type of a, an ordinance saying that you can only have so many uh, footage of properties on the, depending on how big your lot is. And I really would like not to take away my whole backyard. And like I said, just by having to traverse the steps, you know, once in the morning and once in the evening would simplify my life greatly. Right now it's multiple times a day and I, I can't do it. I've got my left side is starting to bother me and I'm just having a lot of problems. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you would grant this appeal. Uh, Ms. Bebecki, and that's part of the concern that I have with regard to this request in that um, the board needs to find that there's a hardship related to the land, not to the tenants of the land, but to the land. Um, as you have indicated here this evening, your condition is getting worse. Uh, and I'm sorry to hear that. Um, all of us are aging to the point that we can't do quite often what we used to do. And that this, uh, quite honestly, it, for someone to make the argument that I need to build a second floor onto an existing one-story building because I have a mobility problem is rather uh, counterintuitive. It, it doesn't quite honestly make sense. And my concern is that your condition, unfortunately, may continue to deteriorate, such that even the once a day traversing of the stairway up to the upper level of the garage is going to become impossible. And that that hardship goes away because you won't be able to use the stairs at all. That's why our findings uh, and the statute requires that our findings be that there's a hardship running with the land that causes the need for the, for the variance. Uh, because tenants are only temporary. The land is permanent. Uh, I will, or excuse me, my house will outlive me. Uh, quite honestly, your house will, may outlive you. That is typically uh, the, the tendency and the probability. So it's not just a condition of the tenants, it's a condition of the land. And sure. quite honestly, your, your house or your lot, even with the encroachment of the easement, uh, meets the standard size, even with the easement encroachment. Um, so it's not that the easement is causing any hardship on this property that isn't felt by all the people down the street that have 60 foot wide lots because you have an 80 foot wide lot, 60 foot of which is uh, fully usable. And in fact, those other people that have a 60 foot wide lot because of the required setbacks have even lesser land to build on. 
but can I can I interrupt for one minute, please? Sure. I thought there was, I thought there was an ordinance saying that you can only have so many like footage of buildings on your property, to, and depending on how big your property is, and it was better to go up rather than out. Because if we go, if we head wow. to the west with the garage, we're not going to really have any backyard at all, pretty much. And isn't that taking the doesn't that affect that ordinance that says you can only have so many square footage of you know accessory structures or houses or whatever on your property, depending on how big your lot is. And since we don't have, you know, since we kind of lost 20 feet because of the easement, we're pretty much just the whole lot is going to just be a building, I guess, uh, between the house. And then if you extend the garage over, which I was hoping that I'd like to keep our backyard. And I, I'm just, like I said, I know I'm not trying to, and I, I know I've seen other two-story garages in the city of Fraser, and I, I don't understand um, why we wouldn't be able to do this because I, it wouldn't make my life a lot easier. And I, I know there's other, I know that there was one built off of Garfield just a few years ago, a two-story garage. And I don't understand why we can't do that. It will make my life easier, even if, as you say, as I'm getting older, if things get to the point where I can't use it down the road, I mean, so be it. But at least for now, I could use it and, you know, it'd be much easier for me. And I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if you can visualize the condition I'm in, but it's, things are not good. And if I can make my life a little bit easier during the day, it would just be an immense help for me. And like I said, I've got doctor, I've got medical documentation explaining why I need 24 seven of attendant care. And I'm just hoping that we'd be able to do this. It would just make things a lot easier for me. And that's all I'm asking. Basically, this is just a height, a height restriction um, variance, I guess, or appeal. And I'm hoping that I'm hoping that you would allow us to do this. Uh, so, Ms. Bebeck, you, you are correct that there is a maximum lot coverage uh, overall in the zoning district. There's also a maximum rear yard coverage by accessory buildings. Um, so if you exceeded those, it would require a variance. There's also a height limit to one story for which you're asking for a variance. I understand. But my my I guess my point is, is that you might have a better shot at asking for an area variance because of a condition, a mobility condition and the need for unified single floor space, than it would be to ask for a second story on a building because of a mobility condition because you can't make it upstairs. There's lacking some logic in that argument, quite honestly. I just, I don't understand. It's, I mean, I'm just not sure then how comes Frazier, I mean, I'm not, not trying to be rude or disrespectful, but I know there are two story garages in Frazier and I'm not understand. I mean, I obviously would have had to have gone to the zoning board of appeals as for variance as well, correct? So I'm, I'm just don't understand why, why we're, we're not able to do this, I guess. Because they may have had a condition of hardship that ran with their land. They may have, have had an extremely large easement that precluded them from building the allowable accessory buildings that they were permitted on one story. I don't know the cases that you're referring to. Yeah, I don't know the properties that you're referring to. But in your the case, the question is, is what hardship runs with the land? Doctor's notes, conditions of the occupants don't count. All right, are there other questions for the petitioner? Recognize, uh, is there anyone from the public that wishes to be heard regarding this request? This is appeal number, um, excuse me, 20 or 05, 21-05. 05. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to be heard regarding this request? Mr. Chair, there's no one else in the meeting. Thank you very much. The applicant. Mr. Rabiel, have we received any written correspondence to the public hearing notices? We have received none. 
Once again, this is appeal number 21-05. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard regarding this request? I have a question, uh, not for you, Mark. Second, please. Okay. It, does it need to be addressed in the public hearing? No. Okay. All right, recognizing no one else wishing to be heard regarding this item, I will close the public hearing and bring it back up to the board. Mr. Farina, you had a question? Yes, uh, I'm unaware of any second story uh, building that outside building. As a matter of fact, the first, my very first case when we got on, I got on the ZBA was somebody who did that. And they, they we made them cut off the top story and cut through the load bearing uh, rafters because he was not allowed to have a, a two story building and he had to cut off the top of his roof. Could I possibly, uh, could I possibly uh, provide anybody with addresses? I, I can find the addresses where the two story garages are if that would be helpful at all as far as no. presenting our case. No, I would, like Mark said, it depend, depended on what they had for their, you know, for, for a, for a reason for a variance. My, my concern is this, that your condition is going to get worse and you, you're, you're going to have to move out. And whoever moves in is going to turn that into a rented, rented property. You know what, I, I, I don't plan on moving. I, I, I really, we've lived here 42 years. I, my intent is not to move. That's why I was trying to make things easier for me. And if anything, mm -hmm. one of the kids would probably buy it. I don't I not, would not be putting it up for sale. That's not what my plan is. Like I said, we've lived here since we got married and mm -hmm. um, it's not yep. my intent to move. That's why I was just trying to make things easier for me. I really, I love living in the city of Fraser, and I, I was just trying to make my life easier because I, it is, it is difficult. I don't know if you can imagine how hard it is to ambulate when you've got steps in your house and you just want to be able to have a place to go to where there aren't any barriers. And that's all I'm asking. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, like I said, I, and I didn't want, I know there's, I know that we can do the area variance like, you know, was requested, but I don't, I don't want to give up my whole backyard. I, I really would like to keep my backyard. I mean, I like sitting in the backyard sometimes. I don't want to have, you know, nowhere to go. I mean, that, that's the reason we were requesting to go up rather than out. Um, oh, out could, I, could I uh, say something? Of course. Um, you're... What is your, do you know the width of your garage right now? Uh, I believe if, if I can look for one second, I can tell you. Is it 24 feet? I believe it's 24 feet. Okay. I own some apartments and um, the studios are only 14 by 26. And that has a dining area, a living room and a bathroom. Why couldn't you cut that in half? Your, your, um, garage right now and then you could put a garage on one side and the living area on the other side and even if you needed a little more you could blow out that outside wall that way you'd have storage and you'd have your first floor unit so it would only be like 11 feet by 22 feet then deep because i right now like i said the garage is i believe well i think it's 24 feet wide right so it'd be 12 by 12 by 22 feet which well, you could, instead of having a two-car garage, you could just blow out the, I don't know if that would be the west side, the west side at whatever feetage you needed to add to your, you know, um, and that way you'd have storage for a car or for your stuff. And then you'd also have a, a first floor place that you could have a bathroom and a, a living room. And that would be plenty of the size, I believe. Well, the transport chair takes, you need a little bit of room to navigate. I don't know if that would even be big enough. And like I said, I really was hoping to keep part of my, you know, some of the, some of the backyard available. I didn't want to use well, the backyard. Well, you, you still have, even without, even if it, you blew it out to your house, the length of your house, you still have 120 feet by 30 feet. I mean, all the way, the, the whole 30 feet of your property line doesn't have anything there. Right. Well, you're saying extend the garage out to the so it lines up with the back of the house, which is 36 if, feet. So if then, you, then there's, if then there's you did, you would still have 30 feet by 120 feet, right, of grass in backyard. Right, yeah. the, you know the the brush and the, 
It's not even, it's not usable because the brush on the drain is so so extensive. It wouldn't be usable for anything else. It wouldn't be usable for anything else. So so all I'm saying is if you if you were just to blow out a couple feet more, okay. Like I said, our studio apartments are 14 by 26, and that's plenty for a living room, a bathroom, a kitchen. That's everything. I know it's a little cramped, you know, uh, but that way you wouldn't need a variance. But I need open floor space too I, to navigate. If it is. Space. It would be it would be four, 13 or fourteen wide. Fourteen feet is is a lot of space. What's that? It's up about four feet. Yeah. By 20, 20, whatever the depth of the uh, uh, garage is. But like my daughter just brought up the chair, when I have to sit in the chair, my legs stick straight out. So you're talking about several feet of the chair. It's not not like a regular wheelchair where people sit with their, their knees folded. My leg is completely straight out. I have, a, I have an accessory unit on my chair that prevents my leg from bending and it rests on that. It rests on that. So trying to navigate around that area is gonna be, is going to be very difficult. Well, it's, it's not any different than your plan up top because your plan on top is 28 and you got a bedroom and you got a dining room and you got the stairway. Well, we so actually, it's, really, it's really no different than the plan that you even submitted. Well, we were hoping to keep, I mean, if I have to keep the walls down, I won't put any walls up there. If it makes it easier, I, I don't, if that, if that, like I said, I, I don't know. I just, I need, I just need to have some place to go. That's all. And I wanted okay. something a little bit larger. It's hard to navigate with the chair. Obviously the bathroom can't be the regular. I need help with the bathroom. I can't just, you know, get in through the bathroom door. I need to have room for that. We have to use the chair to get in on those days. I'm not going to, the bathroom's going to be big enough to accommodate a chair that's probably, you know, sticking out five, six feet because uh, I, you have to have room to get in there and turn it around and everything else. So I'm not sure how that would work. Well, like I said, if you if you cut down that garage because you make it one car, um, that would be only 12 feet and you'd have 16 and then you could add whatever you want on the other side of the garage and would give you plenty of room, I believe. If, if I may, this is Beverly's daughter. A, a 12 foot width room would not really allow for the proper turning radius for a chair when you account for any kind of furniture. And considering that my mom's leg is extra sensitive, any kind of impact to either a wall or a piece of furniture is going to cause an extreme burning pain. Well, it doesn't have to be 12 feet. You can do 20 feet wide. It well, would just keep said, on extending into your backyard. Is what yeah, I'm saying. I, I think the concern with that is that if you extend all the way, even if you extend as far as we can go, the part of the backyard we're left with is all on the easement. And we wouldn't be able to do anything else with that piece of land. It would just be an open piece of land. We can't no do anything. Mark, can hear you. Time, you're muted. Thank you. At this point in time, we've closed a public hearing and it's back up to the board. Is there a motion to be made? The chair will make a motion to deny the request 21-05 uh, uh, regarding the property at 17157 Anita, um, based of the basis for the record for the motion for denial is that the petitioner has failed to show that there's a hardship running with the land that would justify the variance. And it appears that there are numerous 
alternatives um, that would be available to the petitioner without the need potentially of a variance or by a lesser variance that would overcome the hardship running with the tenants. Second. A motion by the chair, seconded by member Farina uh, to deny appeal number 21-05. Is there any uh, discussion on that motion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Abiel, roll call vote. Uh, member Burley. Agree. Member Cimenti. Agree. Member Farina. Agree. Member Logan. Agree. Uh, Member Menendez. Agree. And Chair Stymack. I vote in favor of the motion to deny. That motion does pass. Uh, the request is denied. Uh, Ms. Vivecki, I would suggest that you consult potentially with an architect that may be able to come up with a plan. Uh, I was doing some rough calculations and you could quite possibly build a substantial addition onto your existing garage that would be on the floor level that would not require that you traverse stairs and would still be in compliance with all of the ordinance requirements not requiring any variances. And I suggest that you uh, investigate that as a possibility to um, provide you with some enjoyment or better enjoyment of your property. May I uh, make a suggestion as well? I didn't see who that was, but go ahead. This is Beverly's daughter. Oh, yes. So, so going forward, I would like to suggest that if your concern is mainly with the land, that you don't proceed to compare old age with a disability, a legitimate disability. It comes across as insensitive, disingenuous, and a bit presumptuous to think you understand what my mom is going through right now. But that is all. I, I, I do appreciate your concerns. I, I, once again, the intent was not to diminish uh, your mother's condition. I, I greatly do feel for that. However, in the terms of the Zoning Board of Appeals, those are not items we can consider that, that is completely understood, but can you at least apologize for making that very, very insensitive comparison? I, I do apologize. I don't recall the comparison you're referring to, but- I guess uh, you I, made a comparison saying that you're all suffering from old age as we go on. And yeah. it was somewhat, making the assumption that it's equivalent to a disability. And that's very insensitive. And All I think right, an, I, apology, I, an apology would make a, make a big difference here, please. And, and I do apologize. I, I'm not saying that my aches and pains and inabilities to uh, move about the way I used to is, is equivalent to your uh, mother's condition, um, but the those conditions once again are, are things that are uh, of the occupant of the property in our task our our charge in granting a variance is to find things that are with the land that, that is we, completely understood and okay. that's why i would recommend going forward if this should ever come up again with someone else that you stick strictly to the land use and not comment on a disability or condition, please. I would be happy to if the applicant didn't make that the basis of their appeal. That, that's completely understood. But once again, it's insensitive to make presumptions about this, this subject, especially these days. Okay. So 
I, I appreciate the concern and once again apologize if uh, if that remark offended you or your mother. So moving on to the next item uh, as far as new public hearings, I'm not aware of any. Um, the next item is new business of the board. I am not um, aware of any there. Mr. Abiel, uh, with the uh, resignation of men member Hunt, is there anything that we have to officially do uh, in order to fill his position? Um, no, the, the city administration has opened the call for um, applicants and uh, it, it's been a while since there has been a vacancy in a while as relative terms in, in Fraser, um, just given everyone's uh, relatively, everyone in the administration's relative recent uh, arrival here, myself included. Um, so there's nothing that you need to do at this point. Um, when there are applicants to review, the city administration will propose some and they will be interviewed. Um, I think um, I think who interviews them is still um, a matter of discussion. I think as chair chair Steinmeck, you might be involved in that. But as far as the board, there's nothing official to be done until we have some applicants for the vacancy. All right, thank you. I, I guess for for your benefit or benefit of others, um, it has been the procedure. I won't say policy, but procedure. Uh, in past years that applicants for a particular board, whether it be the Zoning Board of Appeals or the Planning Commission, I can't speak for other boards, um, but it, it has been that a, a interview, so to speak, and or recommendation um, to City Council on vacancies uh, be done by the board. Um, that doesn't have to, there's no statutory requirement for that. Um, but that at least has been the procedure uh, in the past with vacancies on the board. And uh, there would be no problem in doing that again, uh, should city council wish to, or administration wish to do that. Sure. And I, I think that that is, um, that was anticipated. I guess I was just referring to until, until we have applicants to recommend or to consider. Yes. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda is Planning Commission Liaison Member Report. Mr. Farina. Uh, we had no uh, Planning Commission meeting this month, uh, so there's nothing to report. Okay. Is there anything planned for either of our boards uh, for next month? Um, I, I can say confidently that there will not be a zoning board meeting next month uh, because the I don't have any complete applications and the, the notice requirement given newspaper deadlines has passed. Um, planning commission, there still could be, but that said, I don't, I'm not aware of any projects that are in the process of applying. This is my last time in reminding everybody, I will not be here for either meeting should one be required in the first week of November. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda, agenda is public participation. Is there anyone in the public that wish to uh, address the board on any matter uh, on or not on the agenda this evening? I believe we have no one from the public in the meeting anymore. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of minutes of the September 2nd, 2021 meeting. Is there a motion? A motion to brief by Burley. Go ahead. Yeah, a motion by Burley, second by Logan, was it? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, to approve the minutes of the September 2nd uh, Zoning Board Appeals meeting. Is there any discussion on that motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to abstain since I was not at that meeting. From the vote. All right, you can you can do that when your name is called. Thank you. That would be an appropriate uh, action. Uh, if there's no further discussion, Mr. Reveal, the vote. Yes, Member Burley. Approve. 
Uh, Member Chimanti. Approve. Member Farina. Approve. Member Logan. Yes. Member Menendez. I will be abstaining. And Chair Stymack. Uh, vote aye. Motion approves, meaning or the minutes are approved. Uh, next item on the agenda is member comments and items of interest. Does anybody have anything they wish to uh, bring forth this evening? Yes, yes. I do. Oh. Uh, I heard Mr. Farina first, so if you would please go ahead. Yes, on Sundays, if you're interested, uh, St. Malachy's is selling Coney dogs for uh, $2. It's a fundraiser for the parish. It's uh, we have Coney dogs, fries, hop. Um, so if you uh, gonna watch a football game, come down and get your Coney dogs, they're very good. And uh, I'm sorry. You know the, the, hours hours are are the hours are from 12 to three. Okay. Uh, I don't know who else. Uh, uh, Early. You know, uh, Mr. Burley, you had a question or comment? Yes, I was just wondering if there's any news on uh, in-person meetings. I have nothing new to report on in-person meetings. Okay. I have one. Is there any other members uh, having an item that they wish to bring forward? I do. Mr. Chimani. This Sunday from 3 to 6 at the Knights of Columbus, John F. Kennedy, we're having uh, all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner. Um, it's on Kelly Road between 14 and, and Girl Spec Highway. It's all you can eat and good food too. So we can, we can get some Coney dogs in St. Malachy's then head over to, uh, to, uh, JFK to, uh, get oh, spaghetti exactly. to go with it. That's right. Yeah. For $15, $17 to be done. That's right. All right. Anyone else have any items? Hearing none, uh, was that Ms. Menendez? Did you have something? No, I said none for me. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make the motion. Second. Okay. Yeah, motion by Chimani, seconded by Farina for adjournment. Um, we can do this by uh, voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. All of you have a uh, safe time, uh, and we will see you probably in a couple of months, hopefully in person, if we can. Everyone yeah. have a great night. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. You too.